Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ye
which the meaning of the words of Kaddish is Yisgadal Yisgadash Shemei Rabbah, that may the great name of Hashem be sanctified, that why is it specifically during that period of time, at the most difficult time of a loss of a person, that it is those words that we say to bring us comfort during this time. And Sfarim say that it's because when a Yid, and especially Yid, and especially a Yid who was so filled with Maisim Tevim, good deeds, is taken from us. The real loss is the loss of the Ebishter, the loss of Rebbeinu Shalevim, the creator of the world. Because he had, a, he had a soldier here. He had someone here who, over the years, stories that I knew personally, stories that I never shared because there was no reason to, but stories where Judah reached out to me and asked me to help other Yidin so they wouldn't know that it was him giving it to them. And in doing so taught me the real way of giving. <clears throat> he was more than a donor. Over these years, him and Esther have been like mishpacha. It was their charitable hearts that opened up their home to make a fundraiser for Chabad of Malbu, where it was such a beautiful Kiddush Hashem, such a sanctification of Hashem to see, for others to see, that even people in such beautiful homes have a, a regard and a love for Hashem and for His Torah. The tzedakah that He gave over the years, much of it is known, but much of it is not known. The way that He supported Institutions of Torah learning, yeshivas, he told me about it. He told me about the incredible miracles that the Abishter had given to him in the immediate aftermath of giving tzedakah to yeshiva very recently. The time is short, and one thing I know about Judah is that when it came to speeches, he didn't want us to give long speeches. In fact, in Shul, over the many years that he came to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, he was the one to make sure, he was my friend, so he would be totally brutally honest with me. And he was the one to make sure to let me know that I was speaking too long. And Judah, I know your neshama is here with us. I want to thank you on behalf of all the people in our community that you have supported, all the love that you've given. You know, one of the things about Judah was different than many other people that come to Chabad and Malibu. There are people that come, sometimes Givirim, that come. They never saw a homeless guy before. They're uncomfortable talking to them. We have homeless people that have come to us, and Judah has developed a close friendship with them. He would ask them how you're doing, treated them like human beings. Over the next, the days of Shiva, of course, I have so much to share. This time I just say that Kalal Yisrael lost a big neshama, a special neshama. And the Shammah that has continues to bring so much light to so many of Hashem's kindlach. May his neshama be met by Malachim and taken through straight to the highest of the high. And surely all those of us who may have had whatever experiences that we've had, one way or another, I know myself, I had a good enough friendship to know that we could overcome sometimes that Judah would tell me a, a sharp avart, a sharp word, and of course, at this time is when Hashem asks us to let go of whatever that we have in our hearts other than embracing the great light and the great neshama that today we don't say goodbye to, but we say goodbye to his physical presence and we say, Yisgadal v'yisgadash shemei rabba, that may every one of us take the torch that he has left for us and to continue it until we have the real Yisgalos of Melech HaMashiach, we have the Geula HaAmitas V'Hashlema, which on that note, it's been amazing to me to know the relationships that Judah had over the years and the relationships that he had all over the world and the special relationship that he had from the rabbi at the Kotel HaMaravi, Rabbi Rabinowitz, who we were, we were going to hear from a little bit later. 
So right now we're going to hear from We're going to hear now from Rabbi Dov Landau from the Rosh Hashiva of, of Slabatka and my father's first cousin and Judah's first cousin. Okay. Amen. We're now going to hear some words from Rabbi Rabinovich from the Kaisel Hamaravi. Rabbi Rabinovich is the Rav HaKotel, and he became a very close friend of my father's and Astrid and the family. And uh, he's been a very big part of my father's life and uh, felt very close to him and wanted to share some words. Um, it is on speaking, right? Okay, the Vakasha Tatrio. 
אוי צר לי הולך אוכי, נועם תולי מיוי, דאיך נופלו גיבורים. רק לפני עשרה ימים נסעתי במיוחד כדי לראות אותך. שוחחנו מספר פעמים בטלפון מאז והשיחה האחרונה שלנו הייתה רק לפני שלושה ימים. אני רואה אותך, את המשפחה, את אסתר, את הילדים, את הנכדים, ולא מאמין. איך לפתע עלית לגיסי מרוימים? היום יום רוב קצי לא עיוור. כמו הצל שלעולם לא עומד במקום, כך עולפים ימיו של אדם. מה הוא נחשב בכל הגדולה והכבוד שהיה לו אם פתאום הוא נאבד מעולם ואיננו? אבל אתה, יהודה, אתה לא ביקשת לך מעולם לא גדולה ולא כבוד. חמש עשרה שנים אנחנו מכירים כל כך הרבה שעות של שיחה מלב אל לב. ועדיין אני מרגיש שלא זכיתי להכיר אותך מספיק. אוי, דיברת בצניעות, פעלת בצניעות. רק מי שהכיר אותך ידע שבאסטורה, שבתוך האסטורה, עומד איש ענק. ענק בצדוקה, ענק בחוכמה, ענק בטוב ענק בנתינה, ענק במחשוב ועל אחר. הגמורה אומרת במסכת סמוכס, שבגוליל היו מספידים מה שיש בו, את המעלות שיש באדם. אבל ביהודו, בערי יהודה, היו מספידים את מה שיש בו ומה שאין בו. מה זה מה שאין פה? האם מותר לומר על אדם דברים שלא נכונים? אצלך אפשר להבין מה שיש פה ומה שאין פה. מה שיש פה כולם ראו את הגדולה, את העוצמה שלך, את החוכמה, את האצילות. אבל את מה שאין פה, מה שלא גילית את החיים שהסתרת מאיתנו, את הצדקות, את החסד, את הסבל ואת הקושי שאף פעם לא רצית לעשות מזה סיפור. תמיד ראית את הטוב, ביקשת להתעלם מהרע. עכשיו מבכים ברב יהודה כמנהג אנשי יהודה על מה שאנחנו יודעים ובעיקר על מה שאנחנו לא יודעים. וכנראה לא נדע לעולם. אוי, חז"ל מספרים על נבוכת נצר שביקש לחרף את מה שאמר דוד המלך. אוי, לפני דקות אחדות אמרו פה פרק כ"ג בתהילים. הוא רצה לומר שיר אוי ותשבוך אוי סלבוי ויולום. אבל באותו רגע מספרים חז"ל שבא מלאך וסתר לו על פיו. שלא יוכל לשורר לשם. והדבר תמוה, אם היה מוכרח באפשרות של נבוכת נצח לשיר טוב יותר מדוד המלך, למה הפסיקו ממנו לומר? אבל כשנבוכת נצח ישב על כיסא זהב, שהכל אומר אוי ומלכוס, זה לא חוכמה וגבורה לומר שיר אוי ותשבוך אוי. אבל דוד המלך, למרות שהיה מלך, אמר שירו את זה תשבוך או יש לך אותו ישבוך הוא, גם כשהיה לו איסורים, גם כשהיה לו קשה. אמרו לנבוכת נצר, בוא ננסה, תקבל מנה קטנה של איסורים, ונראה איך אתה משורר לך אותו ישבוך הוא. הרי רבי יהודה אצלך, שם שמיים היה תמיד שגוע לשונך. האמונה בבואי ליולום, גם בימים האחרונים, הייתה חלק ממך בכל מסע, בכל זמן. תמיד אמרת, אם נרצה השם, אם נרצה השם, הכל תלוי בבואי ליולום. איך נופלו גיבורים, איך היו עם זוב, 
we'll see if it does mm-hmm. okay how's mm-hmm. this tone mm-hmm. I this tone yes okay um, um, my, one of my father's closest friends is here with us um, mr. Tony Jaffe and um, if you're willing to speak in English we'd appreciate it um, it would be an honor for us if you would share some words with us. Hmm? Hi. Um, it's a hard day for myself. Obviously for Astrid and the family, uh, for the last 20 years, I probably woke up every morning speaking to Judah and went to bed speaking to Judah. I've been fortunate enough to travel the world with him and Astrid. I've been caught in rainstorms. I've been caught in snowstorms. We've been trapped on the in subways. We've laughed our life away, but what made Judah special was his uh, lust for life. He looked at it like uh, it was not a dress rehearsal. He made sure that every day was a special day. Um, nothing gave him more pleasure than you, Astrid. His love for you drove him and gave him such happiness. His family probably was his most important thing for him. Uh, I once asked him, why do you do what you do? You know, his sense of drive and love and it really came from giving. He built to give. He didn't build to collect. For him, it was uh, another way of giving back. He just chose to do it through creating. And uh, for me, he gave me a sense of love. I think in life, if you're fortunate to find one or two people who are there for you, um, he found Astrid. And that gave him that, and obviously his family was the most important thing for him. So he lives with me every day. I still text him this morning. I just uh, want to send my love to him. I'm hoping he's eating a terrific meal right now and telling his stories. I miss his, uh, his laughter and his jokes. But um, your husband and your father was something special to me, beyond unique beyond intelligent, had a heart of gold, and what drove him was giving and caring. So I love you, and uh, I look forward to one day seeing you again. So thank you. My brother-in-law. My brother-in-law. We're going to ask. One of the Adam of Judah of Israel, Gordon. As you might have noticed from the spectrum of uh, speakers that we've had here this afternoon, that um, my schwer was a unique, unique uh, person. And um, I've been studying him for over 20 years now. Never met anybody like him. He was not influenced by the people around him the way most people are. He spoke his mind. He had his own opinions. Um, He 
he wasn't interested in saying something that was necessarily popular or what anyone else was saying. He was only interested in being authentic. And if you would meet him, if you would see him, if you knew him, the impression he gave was very powerful. He filled the room. He was the best looking man in the room. He was the happiest man in the room. He was the best storyteller in the room. He had a commanding presence. He, uh, everybody wanted to be his friend and any, anybody could be his friend. And um, Dad, I just want to say, you, you, know, you put on a great show. You put on a great show. I think um, a lot of people loved you. They knew you. They loved you. And um, that, was, that was great. Um, but I knew a different man. And after a while, I began to realize that that whole persona was Judah's costume. And there was another person there that I don't know how many people saw that sitting at the Shabbos table. It was a it's an Adam God over here, and a Molech Yid, with an Amunah Pshuta. An Amunah Pshuta that I only saw by my, my Rashi Yeshiva, didn't see it anywhere else. A Mid of Chesed. Mida of Tzedakah, that if you didn't see it, you couldn't imagine it. A chokma. And I'll tell you, I, I know that today in yeshivas they have uh, vadin, they have um, balin musr, they, they work on, on these, developing these midas. Um, I, and I'm pretty sure that my shver never worked on these midas. Um, he was born with them. They were in his blood, in his mother's milk. He got them to Yerusha from his ancestors, the Rebbes, the Admirim, from Strikov, and Malba Kodesh, Chekhov, Chekhanova. The Rebbes that he came from, his Yichus, which he never ever spoke about. And he got these extraordinary Midas from his parents, and from his father. His father was his Rebbe. He, the Gabbos, really, you can't really credit Judah for having these attributes because he was born with them and he was given them by his parents. But what's really astounding was that he never lost them. And the fact that he was a man of the world did not in any way dilute these heiligamides, his amuna pshuta, his clarity, his... The, the, the only way to understand my shver is to know that Hitake had a heart condition. He had a Yiddish heart. He had a lave, the likes of which I have never seen anywhere else. He couldn't, he couldn't understand how someone wouldn't want to give. He couldn't, couldn't relate to that. Couldn't, never. It was pushed by him that everybody wants to give the same way. He gives. No, it was poshut. It's poshut. It was poshut to him that there's no greater pleasure than giving.
Sandy said that that uh, dad's need to give was bigger than he was. And his koyach, not to lose those midas that he got from his parents, his koyach to preserve them despite the fact that he was a man of the world and the fact that he was mechazik those midas. And he saw, he saw the Yad Hashem. He never spoke about his uh, real estate conquests. He loved to tell stories. But the story was always not how brilliant he was that he pulled that off. The story was always, look at that muzzle, you know, look at that muzzle. And you walked away from the story always with, wow, look what HaKadosh Baruch Hu did. It, it was a ness, you know. It was, <laughs> it, was, it was never about him. It was never about him. In all the years that I knew him, it's never about him, and and then I. He didn't didn't talk about himself. Didn't didn't hold himself that way. It was just about he called it mazel. It was just mazel. It was just mazel, and he would laugh. This is Anivus. This is Amuna. And. I, I want to ask Mechila from the Nifter. I was not Mech. I know Jude is laughing. I, I, I was not Mechabed properly. He was an Odin Godomoid who wore a costume. Right, um. Yitzi, I didn't get to know you over the years as much as I got to know you from your father and how proud he was of you. I don't know how much everyone wants to hear your thoughts. I wasn't ready to speak yet, but okay. Um, first of all, I, I just want to thank everybody for coming here to honor my father means a great deal to uh, the whole family that every single person uh, took the time to come here and to show their respect to him. I know he would want to say thank you to each one of you. Um, we had the privilege of hearing from uh, the Rav HaKotel and uh, even if you didn't understand the Hebrew I'm sure you noticed the rhythm of his voice, the way that he was sort of singing his, um, his speech. There's a Gemara in, in Brochus that says that when you go to a wedding, I don't know if you're hearing me or not, but the Gemara says in Brochus that if, it's okay, that if you go to a wedding, the primary reward for in other words, the main way of, ma of rejoicing the, um, the groom is through words. But it says that when you give a eulogy, the impact of the eulogy, the Gemara says, is not words, but it's the wailing, the rhythm of the voice, um, inspiring people to feel something. And And the truth is that there's no words 
words are a feeble instrument to be able to express, to be able to describe the loss the loss of any, any, any person, but of course, so much more um, strongly do you feel the loss of, of your father. It's too strong to, to, to be able to express. And it's certainly too strong to be able to express in words. What words are there that could possibly capture the power the awesome the awesome power of my father's love that he always would express to us to his children to myself to my brother and my sister to everyone around him but as a child you feel it most What words could possibly express the greatness of my father, of this man? Who really did spend so much of his life giving. Who was so clever and um, always found a way, even when there was no way. He prided himself on that. Where other people saw a tragedy, he saw an opportunity. But every moment that he put into creating wealth, every one of those moments was an act of giving because ultimately that's what he did with his wealth. And growing up with him in the family, somebody mentioned that it was a, um, it, was an, it was an education in, in giving, and it was, it was like, um, for me, he was always teaching me how to give. Um, my, my father, he was a wealthy man and he gave a lot of money. But that isn't, that isn't, that really doesn't describe his giving. Um, my father had an amazing ability to hear other people. Um, and I think a lot of that may have had to do with, the, with his own personal experience growing up, which he would tell us about where he, um, he had a very rough time in high school. Not just high school, but all the way growing, I mean, his entire uh, uh, childhood, he describes as a period of a lot of frustration. Um, even though that he absolutely adored his parents and his family. Um, but it was hard for him. And, and I think it gave him the ability to see other people's pain, to recognize other people's um, sometimes you know, people try to, try to express themselves, try to be themselves, and other people just won't allow them or won't, you know, just can't hear them, can't hear who they want to be. But my father could hear who people really wanted to be. Um, and he was willing to accept, to accept everyone for who they were without, uh, without judgments, without uh, reservations. He actually would listen. Um, and in my life, there's only a few people I've met that have had that ability. When I was younger, I had the uh, tremendous merit to get to know my father's Rebbe, uh, Rav Avram Landau Zatzal, and I also knew Rabbi Kreisworth, who was also very close with my father. And the two of them made such a strong impression on me. I was so profoundly moved by how wide their embrace of life was, how much they were willing to, to see and hear in other people. More than any human being I'd ever met, except for my father. He was, as Yisrael said, in Adam Gadol, 
in certain ways, in certain ways he was a truly great man, something extraordinary that I can't possibly express, but I'd like to. And um, there's no way I could say thank you for what my father's done for me because it's just too awesome to describe. A quick little uh, anecdote is I was once walking with him. We were walking down the street, probably going to Shul on Shabbos. Across the street, the other side of the road, there's this guy walking down the street. And I said to my father, I said, you know, I don't even know who that guy is. But every time he sees me, he is so friendly. He acts like I'm his best friend. So, what a nice guy, unbelievable. And he says to me, he says, you know, you have no idea how many people cry in front of me? And I completely understood because people cry in front of people that hear them, that are actually listening, and he was listening. There's so much to learn from him um, and so much to appreciate, and it's like the tip of, of an iceberg I can't begin to, to express. But... Um, I'm truly grateful for the experience, for, for the ability to be his son for every single second, for every single second. And I uh, truly hope that we as the family will make him proud. Um, I'd like to ask someone else to come up. Um, Zevi, would you like to say a few words, or are we okay? Yeah? All right. I just wanted to say something specific about my father. Um, that I, uh, that I'll never live up to, but um, something that had a profound impact on me, uh, which is that my father always had such an unbelievable admiration for his own father. It was something that permeated almost every conversation. It was something he didn't have to say anything about. Um, it was something that he passed on to us. It was a level of admiration and, and uh, That, I, that was no better, no greater chinuch that he could have given us other than just his level of just um, unexplainable and a sense of pride and sense of Yerusha that he got from his father. I have my Uncle Dovis here, his older brother. I just want to say one thing. It's a, it's a private thing, but something to learn from, I think, so it's worth mentioning that when my dad um, obviously knew he was not going to live much longer, um, he sat us down, you know, towards the stalkers. It's a big part of his life. He said, you know, from here on in, it's your your call, what you do, what you don't do. But he said, there's one stucca that I want you, I want, I want you guys to perpetuate in the same way I was doing, if you have the ability. And that's my father's yeshiva in Brooklyn. And
and you learn Hilchas Kibar Aveim, and like you see these ideas that are like, do you really have to do that? Do you really have to? I ask my father forgiveness. I I certainly didn't appreciate him enough and didn't was not nearly as respectful as I should have been in many, many in many, many uh, Times we had together. I think we're going to have one more speaker. Do we still have time? What time is it? Yeah, we have time. Oh. Huh? Rabbi Rasa. Yeah. Rabbi Rebson. Rabbi Rebson is the dean of Neve Yerushalayim Institutions. And um, he's been my father's friend for I don't know how long, how long. Chazal are bewildered by the indiscriminate nature of Jewish giving. The people, say Chazal, were asked to give to the Mishkan and they responded beautifully. But equally, when they were asked to give to the Egel, so there too, they rush to give. Why is it that some people seem destined to give their hard-earned money to those institutions which, from our point of view, have very little merit? Chazal say that, that the decisor is a very simple one. Someone who is a roide tzedakah somebody who is eager to give Stocko. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu channels him into the right Tzedakos. On the other hand, those whose giving is not with the highest degree of will, Kaif Shem Es Yitzrom Sechazal. So then, they can give to all kinds of things. Judah was a true Roy Dave to duck. I've known him for a very long time. I've been seeing him until COVID every month for the past 27 years. We've got together and his need to give is Ratifa Sadzdoko sets him apart from almost everyone, anyone else that I have seen. I was with him on Monday morning just a couple of days ago and while he was hopeful that the feeding tube would provide a respite, his situation was clearly quite dire. Israel mentioned um, his mid -ice. There were mid -ice which Judah had and was dissatisfied with in which he labored over a long period to change. And one of them was that he was naturally very judgmental. And we spoke very, very often about the need to see life 
from other people's perspectives understand that they could too be right. In the course of a few hour discussion with him on Monday morning, there was one statement he made in which one saw that there was true delight with him. And that was when he said how his cousin, Rav Dov Landau, one of the greatest Talmidei Chachomim in Eretz Yisrael, had listened to a chiddush from, his, from Judah's grandson and had commented on the basis of the chiddush that this boy, Emir Tzashem, was destined to be a godal b'tayro. This was the one time in the whole of our discussion when I saw some real sense of pride, of dissatisfaction, his understanding that his grandchildren were certainly not going in his path, had very few of the interests that he had, and nevertheless were growing up as sterling human beings, as people of whom everybody could be proud. He understood that they were special and that this specialness certainly came partly from him and he learned to embrace it on the other person's terms to understand how outstanding not only the children were but also the grandchildren and to take nachas from their very considerable achievements. Tzarli Alecho. It would suit me to believe that due to support, massive support, was a result of my salesman's abilities. The truth was, Judah came to me 37 years ago. Not only did he come to me, but he expressed great frustration that he'd put out feelers and I hadn't responded. And he sent the Rav of Antwerp, Rav Kreisvetsal, to me to bring me to him. The reason he was interested in the Vei Yerushalayim was as a monument to his father. His father, after the war, began the first seminary for Balei's Tshuva. He took the Platois, he took the survivors from the camps, he moved them to Sweden. He moved them away from all of that area which they associated with tragedy. And together with Rav Jakobson and Rav Volba, he set up a seminary there. And Judah wanted something in his memory. Judah wanted to replicate that which his father had done. And that was the beginning of a relationship which was characterized by Radifa Satzdoka on the part of Judah such an interest in helping, such an interest in hearing what was going on, such a love for the fact that people who had not grown up with the benefit of Torah and mitzvahs were able to reconnect, to associate with it. This was the source of the joy in many things that he did. He asked himself what his father would have done. He was a totally different person to his father in every possible way. And yet, when it came to it, he so much wanted that the ideals of his own father should be perpetuated too. He was a remarkable person in the breadth of his interests. Yiddishkeit mattered to him. He never made much of it on a personal level. In fact, he always spoke about the fact that he wanted others 
to have a better education than he did. Later on in life, I think there too, there was a change and he came to understand that it was his doing, the outcome of his education was not totally dependent upon others. Judah leaves a home in many of our lives. He was a friend not only to my school but also to me personally. And things that happened, he not only took an interest but he was always the first to come forward, the first to make suggestions and the first to show empathy and sympathy for that which I was going through. I have been benched, I have been blessed with many friends in my life, but none that I can remember who were as open to listening, opening, open to assisting, open to encouraging, who always took my calls, who always responded to my needs on every possible level. Bilam of Isonetzach, may a Kaddish Baruchu see the end of sorrows for the whole world. Shacha Pratias today, Chav Bey Shvat, is also the Yom Hilula of the Rebbe Sunnachayim Mushka, a Yom Zakai for Bnei Yisrael. And I recall on this day the important words that the Rebbe told us, Vahachai Yitain El Libay, that all of us here, hearing the Gavaldika words about Yehuda, the Gavaldika Chesed and the Maisim Tevim that he did over his lifetime, that we each take into our, our own hearts to be the perpetuators of that light which he leaves to us to take from him and for us to complete the end and to complete a uh, complete end of the galus with the mitzvahs and the maizim teifim that we do the, the ilu zechen shmasi and may we have this chus of bila mavis lanetzach will now please rise for the kelmeli rachamim <coughs> Shechein, <laughs> Babushin not would sudoku banas koras nishmosoi. Began aiden temenu chosoi. Lechein bala rachamim. Yasti reu besay se knof of loilomim. Yisro besor chaimis nishmosoi. Adunoi hu nachalosoi. Yenu achamish kavoi. Bishaloi mevenoi maramein. O God, full of mercy, who dwells on high, grant proper rest on the wings of the Shechina, the lofty levels of the holy and the pure ones, who shine like the glow of the firmament for the soul of Yehuda ben Yisrael Chaim, who went on to his world because they will contribute to tzedakah in remembrance of his neshama. May his resting place be in the Garden of Eden. Therefore, 
May HaKadosh Baruch Hu shelter him in the shelter of his wings for eternity. And may he bind his soul in the bond of life. Hashem is his heritage. May he repose in peace on his resting place. Let us say Amen. The Kfura will be at Mount Sinai, 5950 Forest Lawn Drive. The cemetery only allows 20 people to be at the funeral, so we do want to have a minion, but again, let's keep in mind the total amount. This show is asking for everyone to please exit slowly to allow the family to exit first, and again, to everyone to keep your distance. If you're going to the cemetery, please go to your cars, line up behind the hearse with the lights on.